It's a game week in Major League Soccer, and that means another edition of LAFC Black and Gold. I'm your host, Mark Rogandino. We got plenty to get to, including the two guys to my left joining me. First, it's Ryan Wallerson on my far left from Aussie.com to talk a little soccer with us today. And you know him from LASC.com. He writes everything you want to know about the black and gold. Vince La Rosa is here once again. Gents, good to have you along. And obviously a great time to be an LASC fan and follow this team. Just breathe it in for a moment. Like, you feel that? That's greatness in Major yeah. League Soccer right now. First of all, Rogo, thank you for being here. I was <laughs> a little bit worried with Max being gone. I thought they were going to ask me to host and that would have gone sideways immediately. And plus, you gave me some depth, so I'm all about you this week, man. And Ryan, I mean, uh, LAFC just dominating in Major League Soccer right now. This team looks almost unstoppable. You know, they've got two of the best goal scorers in Rossi and Vela and a bunch of supporting cast. It's got them looking like the class of the league right now. So coming off of a big 4 nothing win against DC United, I don't know about you guys, but I thought that was going to be the toughest test to this point in the MLS season. I know it's early. We're just in diapers, as our friend Max Bredos would say. Uh, but they get the 4 nothing win. They get it convincingly. And now all of a sudden we turn our attention to FC Cincinnati. Another first for LAFC, right? They've, they've had so many series of firsts. First wins, first goals, first hat tricks, first shutouts going throughout a season and plus that now they get FC Cincinnati for the first time. Ryan, when you look at this team, what are the challenges that might face the black and gold and Bob Bradley? Well, you know, it's funny. You talk about first and first and first, and FC Cincinnati is now wearing the inaugural team hat, so this will be their first trip out to Bank of California Stadium. And they're coming off of a tie against SC Cincinnati that I know that they're not happy about. They had an opportunity to go up 2-0 against SKC an uh, hour into that game, had a miss, and then a couple minutes later, they ended up you know, having that kind of weird goalie backline miscue with the young 16-year-old able to equalize for SKC. They're a team that's, you know, two wins, two draws, two losses. They've got eight goals so far, and they've come from eight different players. So the goals come from all over the field. So LAFC can't really key in on one or two players and say we can't let that player beat us. They have to look at that team as a whole. They've got goals from the defense all the way up through the attack. So got to keep an eye out for the entire team for LAFC. What are you seeing in FC Cincinnati? Yeah, I think Ryan nailed it. Basically, it's a team effort from FC Cincinnati, right? There's no one guy to key in on. I think if I'm looking at this match, I'm wondering what Cincinnati will see. We've seen sometimes they can, well, they want to come out and play. Sometimes they want to stay back. I don't know if coming out and playing against LA, especially here at Bank of California Stadium, is the best idea. I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little bit of the RSL blueprint. Maybe sit back try to wait them out, see if they can break you down and hit you on the counter because they got some speed on the edges. Yeah, I think you bring up an interesting point in terms of talking about which FC Cincinnati team are we going to see, right? They're there have been a mixed bag of results. It's been up and down for them so far this season. Uh, and for me, uh, a huge question mark, obviously, is Fernando Adi, right? I mean, a guy who had some off-the-field troubles with FC Cincinnati. But for me, he is their marquee player. There's a reason why they grabbed him early before they even made their way into Major League Soccer because this guy can score goals. I mean, he's I would compare him to Adama Diamande in a sense that he's skilled up top, he can hold defenders off his back, but he can also let guys run off him if, if they need in terms of a point man, a true number nine. It's not going to be easy if he's in the lineup. I think it's much easier for LAFC defensively if you don't have to look at a guy like Adi being up top for them, right? You know, I'll go with that. But, you know, LAFC, their back line, definitely playing with a lot of confidence right now. Zimmerman and Segura in the middle has been really strong in terms of keeping people from finding the back of LAFC's net. Uh, five goals only given up in six games. I think that no matter what lineup they face from FC Cincinnati going into the game, being back at home, back in front of the 32-52 and the rest of the fans, I think this is another opportunity for LAFC to continue a strong start to the season. Hey, and anybody that comes to the bank knows that they're dealing with a lot when you come here to Bank of California Stadium and, and try and go against the black and gold. It hasn't worked out too well for many past opponents, and it's probably going to continue uh, later on today. All right, we're just getting started here on LAFC Black and Gold. When we come back, we'll continue the conversation and take a deeper look into uh, some new stuff that's going on with the club. Plus, we have our social media showdown coming up much later. You're going to want to stick around.
Welcome back to LAFC Black and Gold. I'm Jarena Catalina, joined by head coach Bob Bradley. Bob, thank you so much for being here with us. Starting right away, LAFC off to a phenomenal start. With that, when your club is doing so well, coming off of two statement games and that feeling of success, there's going to be a lot of chatter of the projection of how the team is going to finish at the end of the season. What has your message been thus far to your team to ensure that they stay locked in and they're also building? I remind them all the time that we can't get ahead of ourselves uh, because building a good team uh, requires going through some tough moments as well. And so far this year, things have gone our way. Uh, we're all pleased with the start. I think we're going in a good direction. Um, but when you take your eye off the ball, usually you pay the price. So uh, I stay on top of everybody when it comes to that. And how do you measure your team's performance and how would you assess their performance thus far this season? Overall, I, I give credit to the players. Uh, I think the carryover from last year, guys came in, they were excited uh, to get started. Um, that feeling of losing the home playoff game to RSL was still stuck with everyone. Uh, so preseason went well. Uh, we were able to pick up on many of the same ideas. Uh, this year's team I think day in and day out is even more competitive. And there's a group of guys that have done a fantastic job taking uh, bigger leadership roles. In a situation where you have a roster that's filled with a lot of healthy players, sometimes you know you might get thrown the injury bug and it almost forces your hand to kind of switch things around. How do you manage that? We believe that the training environment's really good. So we think that uh, every day guys are getting challenged and are getting better. And you never want injuries, but uh, it's that, that everyday training that now prepares players that when their moment comes, they're ready to step up. FC Cincinnati um, is in a very similar spot to where LAFC was a year ago. How have you seen them and what do you think of them thus far in their last six games? I think Cincinnati has started out really well. They're very athletic, they're organized. Uh, and, and so we expect them to come in with a real game plan. Um, but uh, it's never easy coming out of the blocks the right way. And I think uh, FC Cincinnati deserves a lot of credit for doing a good job. Thank you so much, Bob, for your time. Always appreciate it. And more in the LAFC Black and Gold when we return. Welcome back to this week's episode of LAFC Black and Gold. Mark Rogandino, Vince La Rosa, Ryan Wallerson uh, here with you this week. You know, it isn't just us three that make up, oh, it's very hard to believe, but it isn't just us three that make up this show. There's a lot of other bodies and great minds that go into it, including our producer, Bernard Worrell, who always seems to come up with a great game. I saw you guys with the offside, onside uh, a couple of weeks ago. And this week, it's fill in the blank. I'll throw out a couple of statements, and these guys have the luxury or maybe not the luxury of filling in the blank with what they think exactly is going to happen. So I'll start with you first, Ryan. Uh, Atlanta United blank at the end of the season. Obviously, Atlanta United hasn't had the start to the season that they wanted, two draws and two losses so far. But I do think that they're going to rebound as the season uh, continues. I think that the turmoil of losing Almiron and changing your coach and having De Boer and having to figure out how he's going to run things is causing the issues that they're having right now and I think over a 34 match season the true talent level of that overall roster is going to show. I think that the early season struggles may cost them the highest or a higher seed in the playoffs so maybe they end up at four to seven but I don't see them missing it. 
So clearly, Ryan, your word is rebound. Uh, what say you, Vince? Atlanta United blank at the end of the season. I'm going to raise you on that one, Wallerson. I'm going to say Atlanta United will be competing for a home playoff match at Ooh. the end of the season. If hot I, take. Hot, hot take. take. If I look at it, yes, they've been, they've been bad, and we agree on that. But there's just too many match winners in this team. And when you look at what Seattle did the year before, Seattle had 16 points through half of the season. That's true. And managed to get into second in what I think the West is tougher. So I think Atlanta has just too many good players. Without the CCL, they can now work on their tactics, which has been the biggest problem, learning a new system. I think by the end of the season, we're going to see them up in those top maybe one to two spots. All right, for me, it's going to be a phrase here, Atlanta United will be Toronto FC 2.0 at the end of the season. And I say that meaning, yes, they will come with fire and fury in the last 10 games of the season, but they will not make the playoffs this season in Major, in major League Soccer. Yeah. So we've completed the spectrum. Yeah, exactly. Lower seed, higher seed, <laughs> missed the show. Exactly. All right, here's our second one. The MLS sleeper team is blank. And I'll start with you, Vince. The MLS sleeper team has to be the Houston Dynamo. Another, just like Atlanta, you look from at their lineup top to bottom, so many match winners. Monotis is the ultimate sleeper forward. I mean, yeah. 19 goals and no one talks about him. I think he's going to probably hit 20 this year. Albert Elise is playing for a move. I'm sorry, Houston fans, but he, he wants out of there. Of course he is. Uh, he's playing for a move, and he's going to keep raising his level. And I just think as long as they can stay healthy, guys like Cabezas and stuff like that stay healthy, they're going to be a team that's going to spoil a lot of dreams. For already, off, already off to a good start so far this season. For you, the MLS sleeper team is... I'm going to go with a less popular pick and go with FC Cincinnati in the wide open Eastern Conference, a team that is familiar with the struggles of a 34 game schedule over uh, summer in America, having been the best team in the second division last season, 77 points, I think, amassed in 2018. They've got players, they've put together a really good roster, players from all over the league that have had success in the league before. Uh, Darren Matzek's having 10 goals for DC United last season comes to mind. And there are a bunch of players that come to mind on that list. Uh, so for me, FC Cincinnati, sleeper out the East in 2019. All right, I'm going to go to over to the Western Conference. And I feel like this team has always been a sleeper every season because uh, they just don't get a lot of pub. And I'm going to call them out again. I think it's going to be FC Dallas. Uh, changing coach, obviously Oscar Pareja no longer there, but I like the young core of players, even though you know they lost a good player like Yoa to over to FC Cincinnati, but I feel like FC Dallas is a team that is young and people aren't really going to look at them as they did a couple of years ago when they were always in the Supporter Shield conversation, but yet they still have some really good young talent out there. Uh, they win a lot of games defensively is I think how they're going to win a lot of games, so FC Dallas is going to be my, my, my sleeper team in Major League Soccer. All right, here's the final one, and this is a good one. Next time DC United and LAFC meet will be, you ready? I'm going to go first here. Next season. A lot of people said it's a possible MLS Cup preview with the two teams meeting uh, this past week in, in Major League Soccer. And of course, LAFC drubbing them 4 nothing is the final score. But I just don't see, I don't see DC United fulfilling all the way to the MLS Cup final. That's just my prediction. I could be wrong on all these, Vince. I see why you went first, because you stole mine. <laughs> I'm going to say next season as well because I don't see it. Defensively, I think they're thin. We saw mm -hmm. it. Chris McCann has to come in. Vela just tears them, tears Brilliant, them apart. Brilliant was, but I think, the, yeah, Brilliant was pretty bad. I think the biggest thing they need to worry about is Luciano Acosta. He can start talking to teams during the summer. And we saw him come off the pitch. Didn't look too excited about coming off. So Should have already been gone, right? Yeah. Are we, are we, so are we starting to see those, those seeds of unrest? I don't know. So if that happens, if they even one of their best players goes out, they're, they're done. All right, Ryan, you have your say to fill in the blank. Next time LAFC and D.C. United will be, meet will be? Next season. We, we, wow, we are all right on the here. same page. It. Great the, minds think alike. The Eastern Conference is so wide open. You've got Columbus and Toronto at the top. Toronto just replacing Giovinco. Columbus building off of a successful season last year. You've got both New York teams and Atlanta on the outside looking in playoff picture right now. I don't think that that center holds. So I think there's just too much competition in the Eastern Conference. I don't see D.C. coming out. Can I add this? Yes. After the D.C. match, Bob was told that Mark Anthony K. possibly tipped and predicted that D.C. and L.A. would meet in the MLS Cup final. Okay. And he said that Mark would be fine. So the I'm, I'm going to say my answer is also because I do not want to be fine, Bob. <laughs> Great point. Great point. Just here so I don't get fine. And some good insight from Vince LaRosa, of course. All right. Uh, we hit a break here on LAFC Black and Gold. Uh, you've already heard from Bob Bradley. When we come back a little later on the show, you'll hear from one of the LAFC players. And, of course, it's the uh, SMS, the showdown to discuss what we've come up with that's a little bit out of social media 
and something we might get a laugh out of or something I might test these guys about. Stick around more on YouTube TV. ¿Qué tipo de conversaciones tuviste tú con los entrenadores la temporada pasada en términos de las expectativas que ellos tenían para ti para este año? Muchísimas. Las expectativas siempre son muy altas porque el año pasado llegué después de haber empezado la temporada, ya para este año, ya con una temporada de experiencia acá y con la posibilidad de hacer la pretemporada, eh, esperaban que que esta nueva temporada sea muchísimo más alta de, la que, de lo que fue la anterior. Entonces, las expectativas para ellos siempre están muy altas, exigen demasiado. Pienso que es bueno para mí porque me ayuda a ser mejor cada día como, como futbolista. Has empezado los seis partidos, has jugado todos los 90 minutos. ¿Tú sabías que ibas a tener tanto éxito tan temprana en la temporada, ¿qué tipo de metas te pusiste a ti mismo para tener tanto éxito como has tenido? Mis metas son altas, mis metas son lograr un título con el AFC y, y poder aportar lo máximo posible a mi equipo. Espero seguirlo, por, pues poder seguirlo haciendo y lograr o el título o lograr por lo menos que, que el equipo tenga una campaña cada vez mejor en lo que hicimos la temporada pasada. ¿Y qué tipo de trabajo hiciste tú personalmente, puede ser mentalmente, físicamente, en la postemporada que de pronto mucha gente no sabía o no vio de cómo te estabas preparando para este año? Primero que todo, el estar con la familia, el estar en tu país, el poder ir a Colombia, eh, recarga un poco de eh, la parte sentimental, la parte emocional de la persona. Pienso que fue muy bueno para mí eh, y también la preparación que tuve físicamente eh, mientras estuve descansando eh, fue muy importante. Pienso nunca lo había podido hacer, lo hice con una persona muy, muy importante para mí en estos momentos y, y ha dado resultado pues, muchísimo más del que esperaba. Me siento muy bien físicamente, me siento en muy altas condiciones y espero poder seguir estando así. Y definitivamente podemos decir que los aficionados lo han visto y visto todo el trabajo que has puesto porque en la cancha hemos visto que has tenido muchos tiros de esquinas en, en términos de las oportunidades. Tuviste un tiro libre contra GC United esta semana pasada. Eh, te estamos viendo en estas eh, circunstancias de oportunidades. ¿Qué más podemos ver de ti en los otros partidos que vengan? Sí, he tenido varias oportunidades, sobre todo en pelota quieta. Eh, es una fortaleza que tengo. Pienso que puedo ofrecerle mucho de eso al equipo. Espero poder marcar muchos goles eh, de tiro libre. Y lo que espero es poder seguir dando mi 100%, poder lograr cosas importantes con el club, como un título o como llegar a jugar un, título, un torneo internacional como lo es eh, la CONCACAF y también buscar eh, nuevos horizontes en mi carrera como lo es la Selección Colombia, como lo es dar un paso eh, en mi carrera importante que son los sueños que, que tengo. Actualmente Carlos Vela tiene el estatus de MVP, él siendo tu compañero de equipo, ¿cómo él te inspira personalmente en la cancha? Carlos es el referente del equipo, es 
eh, la persona eh, que nos lidera tanto futbolísticamente, tanto fuera del campo. Carlos motiva, motiva a ser cada día un mejor futbolista porque lo ves haciendo los goles que hace, lo ves haciendo las jugadas que hace y es sencillo, no puedes quedarte atrás a eso, tienes que mejorar tú para que él pueda seguir haciendo su trabajo. Entonces tienes que entregarle mejores pases, tienes que darle muchos más balones para que él pueda brillar, para que él pueda eh, ser quien es. Entonces, desde atrás intentar hacer todo lo posible para, para que los de adelante brillen y sobre todo Carlos. And more LAFC Black and Gold when we come back. Like many good things in life, as we welcome you back here to LAFC Black and Gold, we save the best for last. Uh, Ryan Wallerson from Aussie.com, Vince La Rosa from LAFC.com, and Mark Rogandino here sitting in uh, for Max Bredos this week. Guys, it's time for what everyone waits for, Social Media Showdown, SMS for short, because we always like to shorten things here in this day and age. So an opportunity for one of us, each one of us, to come up with something clever, something to think about and ponder. Uh, why don't we start with you first, Ryan? My selection is a uh, 36-year-old Adebayo Akinfenwa who plays for the Wycombe Wanderers. He scores a goal and comes in for a celebration here, and he's doing the, he's trying to drop the people's elbow, but he kind of loses his footing as he begins the celebration. So the, this is my... It's a big story. man right there, first is, of all. That is a big man to get right, dropped on. Right. So <laughs> it's, not, it's not just the style of celebration or the fact that he stumbles on the way down, but it, it's just the sheer stature of the man. Uh, 224 pounds, 6'1", and you see him take this little kind of stutter, backward step as he goes down. Just imagine being the guy who agreed to be the prop for this player. Thank goodness, Vince, he missed whatever was supposed to be underneath him because, uh, and by the way, we did just have WrestleMania come through, uh, so a little wrestling ode right there for WWE. Uh, I'm going gonna, I'm, I'm gonna to give that I'm, a thumbs up, man. I'm gonna I, say like, great. I like that. Great debut, Ryan. I want to say this. One of my favorite things in the NFL is fat guy celebrations. We don't get them in soccer because we don't have very many fat guys. That's true. That's awesome. Right? Are, you, are, are, you, are you saying he's a fat guy? He's a fat guy. He was kind of a big dude. Sorry, right sorry there, for the right? fat shaming, he, but he's a big dude. He, he was a big guy, but it's a big goal score. That's right. That's right. That's right. Uh, what do you have for us this week, Vince? Um, so I went with the obvious, guys. You've seen this. You know it. Uh -oh. I'm going to say this. Week in and week out, I still have friends that tell me, do you think we could make it in MLS or professional soccer? And I have to tell them no. But then when you see this, I could have done that. Like, as I could have missed. I may not have made it, but I could have missed. So maybe I could have played for PSG. I mean, think about it. Tim Weah is stuck at Celtic, and this man is missing goals from inches. Oh, gosh. Right there on the spot. I mean, what was he thinking right there? I don't know. And stealing from his friend, too. That's going in. I don't think he needed to touch it. He did not <laughs> need to touch that at all. That's a goal if he stays 50 yards away from it. And you gotta, you gotta love the caption there. Oh, Chopo Moting. Oh, mate, come on. What are, you do, what are you doing right there? So for me, I mean, what do you guys think? I, I like it. It's a like button for me. I like it. Very rewatchable. <laughs> the agony is infinite. All right, I'm going to switch it up a little bit here uh, for my turn. It's not something that has quite the comedic timing that the two of you brought, but since it is near and dear to our heart, uh, a celebration of the 1999 U.S. Women's Winning World Cup team against China. Uh, they were out here at Bank of California Stadium this past weekend and an opportunity not only to see the current crop really take down Belgium in a 6-0 win, but also uh, when you look at this group of players, 
they really set the stage for what women's soccer has really become, and even soccer in this country in that motion. So I test each of you two, and then you can tell me if you like or dislike this. Uh, how many of maybe the starting 11 could you name? Oh, the starting 11? <laughs> can I say this? Michelle Akers looks like she could still go 90 minutes. She probably she, could. She's over there in the upper left. Let's see. Uh, you got Brandy Chastain. Okay. Uh, is Michelle Lilly in there? Christine Lilly, but Christine if you, Lilly, you're, a good, you're her good friend, so you call yeah. her Michelle. That's obviously, right. You, you, obviously, she's near and dear to our hearts, Mia yeah, Hamm. That's right. That's right. Mia uh, Hamm. Okay, you got four. Uh, Kate. Oh, Kate McGrath. Yep. Okay. Uh, that's five. Julie Foudy. Yep. Oh, I can't believe I almost missed Julie Foudy. Right. Uh, Brianna Scurry's up there. Yeah, of course, starting leading goal. All right, I'm running. I'm running low, Rogo. Help you're me. You're at Ryan. seven. You you're at seven. You have gotten all four that I was going to try to name. Uh, so speak. you're on your own. Speed, speedy winger that was out on the right hand side and she was sm small little spark pug. She continued to run very, very quick. Tiffany. Oh, Mil yeah. Milbrit? Milbrit, there yes. we go, there we go. Do we have one more? Do we have one more? You, one more, one more. There's one that I would have never got. That's Cindy Cohn. I would have never gotten no. her. Uh, Carla Overbeck is a tough one too. And Carla, then, I might have gotten. And then, and then one of my favorite defenders ever, Joy Fawcett. Remember, she ended up wearing the the full ninety headgear during her playing days as well. So you made pretty good. I got. Let's see. One, one, two. You guys had seven of the starting eleven. Well, Vince just blew it out of the water with the knowledge there. But I will get on the board by saying that I do have a Sports Illustrated frame photo of Brandy Chastain's moment hanging in my room. Who could ever forget that moment? It was it was legendary for many many soccer players and fans to follow. Uh, for that time. So that's going to do it here, right? For the LAFC Black and Gold. Good stuff from both of you guys. Oh, by the way, I was concerned whether or not both of these guys were even born in 1999. I'm dating myself a little bit here, but I, I, I know you guys were. Uh, on behalf of Ryan, Vince, and Mark Rogandino, thanks again for joining us for LAFC Black and Gold. Make sure you keep it here. This is the place where you find everything about the best club in Major League Soccer, LAFC, right here on YouTube. Too. When you have doctors working as a team for your health, you get the care you need to help you thrive. Visit kp.org to learn more. Kaiser Permanente. Thrive. Uh, hey, Dad, can we give Lisa a ride home? Sure. The new Porsche Cayenne. There's nothing like the feeling when you sports car together. Enjoy the all-new RAV4. What if we take it to the mountains? Ooh, what if we check out that cave? <laughs> what, if what if somebody else made a suggestion? Yep. Right now, at the Toyota Ready, Set, Go sales event, you can lease an adventurous all-new 2019 RAV4 for a low $299 a month. Ready, set, go get your Toyota today. Toyota, let's go places.